Hey guys, can you thoroughly explain the difference between analog audio, digital audio, and what I like to call real mechanical sound in the air? So we often deal with analog or digital audio while working to record, alter, and reproduce actual mechanical sound that we hear with our ears. Oftentimes we work with all three within the same workflow, but even though we use all of these, it's all too easy to never really think about or understand how each of these three types of audio function and what they actually are. So in the interest of being well-rounded audio engineers and producers, we're gonna cover these three forms of audio today. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about real sound, the actual mechanical sound in the air that we hear with our ears. When a sound source, whether it's a speaker cone or vocal cords or a musical instrument or whatever it is, makes sound, it does so by vibrating back and forth. This vibration moves the air particles adjacent to the sound source, causing patterns of compressed and rarefied air that radiates out from the sound source. This pattern of compressed and rarefied air particles, this variation in air pressure is what we call sound. It's what I'm talking about when I say something like the mechanical sound in the air, and it's what our ears translate into the sound that we hear. It's also what we're attempting to capture, recreate, and sometimes just generate when we work with analog and digital audio. So now that we know what sound is when it's sound in the air that we actually hear, how do we then store that information using analog and digital audio and how are these two different? Well, let's start by talking about analog audio. Analog is called analog because it's designed to be analogous to real audio. In case you're not familiar with the word analogous, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, analogous means susceptible of comparison either in general or in some specific detail, showing an analogy or likeness that permits one to draw an analogy. Analog audio creates this analogy for real audio through an electrical signal, with variations in the instantaneous voltage correlating with the real audio's variation in air pressure. For example, when we record with a microphone, our sound source in front of the mic creates real audio, which then travels through the air to the microphone, and then the microphone converts the mechanical energy in the air into variations in voltage, which then travels to whatever piece of gear you've plugged your mic into. How each microphone converts these compressions and rarefactions into variations in voltage depends entirely on the microphone type, and we will talk in more detail about microphone types and how they work in another video. But audio becomes analog audio as soon as we make this conversion from compressions and rarefactions in the air into variations in voltage. You can think about how these variations in voltage are analogous to the compressions and rarefactions in the air by thinking about the higher voltage values correlating to the more compressed moments in the real sound wave, and the lower voltage values correlating with the more rarefied moments in the real sound wave. So that's analog audio, and if you think about the variations in voltage going up and down as an analogy to the real audio, I think it makes it easier to understand why and how we get the waveform as a means of depicting audio. You can see how we go from something like this, where we depict the real audio, variations in air pressure, traveling through the air in all directions, to something like our waveform, which instead looks like it's just going up and down in time, just like the variations in voltage with analog audio. Okay, so that's real audio and analog audio, but how does digital audio work? On the most basic level, when we convert from an analog to a digital signal, we are converting this fluctuating voltage into ones and zeros. When we do this, we no longer have a value that's constantly fluctuating, but instead we're taking individual snapshots of the analog signal and storing a series of values that are then used to recreate the signal. This is similar to how a flipbook animation or film depicts movement. By recording and then playing back a series of still images rapidly and in succession, films trick the human brain into thinking it's looking at movement. Similarly, digital audio captures a series of data points with each data point storing information on the analog signal for that exact moment. These data points are then used to reconstruct something very close to the original analog signal when unpackaged and used by the computer in rapid succession. It's kind of like a very fast game of connect the dots. How the computer creates these data points is affected by and controlled by factors like sample rate and bit depth. I already have a couple of videos on these topics if you want to learn more, so I'll put some cards up here on the screen for you to watch those videos next if you want. So that's it. I hope some of this information was useful for you guys. I know it's basic review for some of you, but either way, I hope you like this video and please let me know what you think in the comments below. For today's question, I want to open up a can of worms and I want to ask, do you prefer to work in analog or digital and why? Please leave your answers in the comments below. So thanks guys. As usual, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, subscribe to my channel, or check out my Patreon. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay. I can't talk this much. It's too much.